Hey everyone, it's PixInsight for the win, and today I want to show you a bit about cosmetic correction in PixInsight. I'm using this great hydrogen alpha data set of the Horsehead Nebula by uh, Dreams Please, and uh, they posted a, a great image of it. But I noticed that the uh, initial data set that was posted had a lot of hot pixels. And of course these uh, could be taken care of with bias frames or dark frames. Any good calibration should take care of them. But um, I want to show you what we could do with this tool, Cosmetic Correction, even if we didn't have any of those. So it's under All Processes, and I set a little preview that will help process the image more quickly. And uh, we can turn on a real-time preview and instantly see, uh, of course we can't do it until we turn on uh, Auto Detect or one of the other. Notice that you can use Master Darks. But notice it's like a vacuum cleaner for hot pixels. It just instantly cleans those up. I'll do a little before after. And I uh, didn't get all of them, but we can dial in these settings a little bit. So the higher our hot sigma goes, the more hot pixels it'll keep. And the lower we get to zero, the more it'll chop. But you want to make sure that it's not chopping legitimate data. So there's a little bit of experimentation that you want to do. I didn't see any uh, dark pixels on the image, so I'm just going to leave the cold sigma off. Um, so I found this. It worked pretty well. And I could drag off an instance of this. It can be used in batch pre-processing. It's a very handy uh, extra tool to use on top of uh, maybe processing with flats or, no, sorry, bias frames or darks. But in this case, I'm going to use it on the, the full set. I'm just going to move this preview window over and check another region. Just make sure our settings are good. I usually check two or three uh, regions and just turn on the preview, make sure it looks good. And um, yeah, so it's not bad for this frame. Notice there are some residual hot pixels. As long as you dithered, those will all be taken care of with the sigma rejection and uh, image in integration. So I'm going to go with a final setting here. I think I picked uh, 2, uh, 1.9. Um, oh yeah, you can also type it in incrementally, of course. Uh, you could also set up uh, defects, so if you have uh, whole things that are burned out on your chip, you can get rid of a whole column up to a certain amount, and you can also use a master dark frame that'll map all the hot and dark pixels. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that instance off, but I, do, I really don't need to. Instead, I could just run cosmetic correction in batch on the whole set of raw files that were posted. So I'm uh, going to fast forward time here. Of course, I got to set my output, make a folder called CC for cosmetic correction. And uh, notice the options. And then I'm going to run it globally and um, fast forward time here. Uh, you wish your computer went this quickly, as do I. And now uh, let's use one of my favorite tools for looking at data, Blink. Yep. So I'm going to load the data set here. This is the original set, and we can see the problems. Uh, so I just ran the screen transfer function and now zoom way in, zoom on the horse head itself. Now I can flick through each of them. And I see that dithering is going to be uh, very useful for getting rid of those residual hot pixels. Because when we align the images, uh, all those hot pixels will move position and then they'll be averaged out pretty effectively. So let's uh, load in the cosmetic correction ones see how much better we did here and uh, go to the same general area uh, oh whoops I gotta do my screen transfer function and I can hit play here and you still see some artifacts but as I said those will get dealt with uh, pretty nicely with image integration so yeah looks like an old-time movie so, uh, it's in good shape to be able to do uh, alignment, of course. I'm going to pick a uh, file from the middle, so that way I'll be able to chop on the left and right. It looks like it drifted significantly. So, dithering is good. Everyone should be dithering. Um, some of us have even jumped off of doing flats and dark frames, and just do bias frames and dither and use cosmetic correction, and uh, you still get great data. So again, this is sped up significantly. Someday, guys, someday we'll be able to do things that quickly. And then we're going to run image integration. 
clear what was in there, add up the registered and cosmetically corrected stuff. And uh, so initially, sometimes I'll do this, I'll turn it off, well, yeah, of course it's always average, uh, I'll turn off the pixel rejection just to see what residual artifacts there are. And we're going to see that there are still a fair number. It's nowhere near as bad as it would be, um, but you still see a couple hot pixels didn't get picked up by cosmetic correction. But now there should only be one of each on any given pixel. Easy, easy to um, reject out with Windsorized Sigma clipping, which is good for this size data set. So I'll run it again, once again sped up, and uh, the value you want to be looking for, uh, let's see, we'll zoom in here, yeah, come on, tile, good, great, yeah, so looks, looks very smooth, very nice data set, no hot pixels to be seen, yes, zoom to the same amount. We got it. Slide down a little. All right. So I think the people can see. Yeah. Okay. And uh, this is the value, the median noise reduction. That's the thing you want to increase to the max. So um, mess around in image integration with the sigma high and sigma low settings. Go as high as you can go without getting extra frames. And uh, well, I guess that's the end of the clip. <laughs> so see you out there. Talk to you later.